They say that loyalty doesn't exist in football anymore, but that just plainly isn't true. Sure, Fabian Delph might have promised never to leave Aston Villa, 15 minutes before posing with a Manchester City shirt at the Etihad, Robbie Keane may have claimed to have been a lifelong Leeds United, Tottenham Hotspur, Liverpool, Celtic, and Atletico de Kolkata fan, and Anthony Gordon was perhaps so determined to leave his boyhood club after scoring seven goals for them that he threatened to burn down Goodison Park if Everton didn't accept Newcastle's bid, but scratch just a little bit below the surface, and you will find that loyalty is still very much alive and kicking in football. Edgar Davids was so loyal to AC Milan that he only went on to play for both of their biggest rivals. Diego Costa's dedication to the nation of his birth was such that he waited all of six months after making his debut for Brazil before announcing his intention to represent Spain instead. And the likes of Oscar, Hulk, and Asamoah Jan have illustrated a relentless loyalty throughout their entire careers to whichever club offered them the most cash. Oh, alright then. Perhaps there isn't that much loyalty left in football these days after all, and it goes both ways. Players and coaches might be total mercenaries, but clubs are no less ruthless or self-interested. That makes those isolated examples of loyalty all the more exceptional though, and in today's video, I wanted to take a look at some of the most notable examples of current players who have stood by their clubs through thick and thin, turning down more money, fame, and a better shot at trophies on several occasions. Without further ado then, who sadly ended up becoming something of a journeyman, here are seven of the most loyal current footballers. Seventh, Chiro Mobile. A bit like Leaning Towers, Chiro Mobile is magnificent in Italy, but a disaster waiting to happen anywhere else. Immobile made his name on loan at Pescara in Serie B in the 2011-12 season, where he scored 28 goals, and then in Serie A where he scored 22 goals for Torino two years later. That prompted a move to Borussia Dortmund, a club that is renowned for their expert recruitment of forwards, from Robert Lewandowski to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Immobile failed to follow in their footsteps though, stating that he felt unsupported at Dortmund, and a six-month loan spell with Sevilla proved to be even more disastrous. Following a loan spell back at Torino, Lazio signed Immobile in the summer of 2016 for a fee of just 8.75 million euros, less than a tenth of what Juventus paid to sign Gonzalo Higuain that same summer. Since joining Lazio seven years ago, only four forwards have scored more goals in Europe's top five leagues, Messi, Ronaldo, Lewandowski and Kane. In the 2017-18 season, Immobile scored 41 goals, and a tally of 39 two years later won him the prestigious European Golden Shoe. On that basis, Immobile ought to be considered one of Europe's best forwards, yet that's never really been the case. One thing that he undoubtedly is, though, is fiercely loyal. Despite his underwhelming escapades in Germany and Spain, there has been no lack of interest in Immobile from both within and outside of Italy over the years. Following his stunning debut campaign at Lazio, Immobile was reported to have turned down several offers, reports which he has himself since confirmed, believed to have come in from AC Milan and Chelsea. Chelsea reportedly tried for Immobile again in 2019, along with Liverpool this time around, and then Newcastle in 2020 and 2022, all in deals that would probably have doubled Immobile's wages. But to no avail. Just last week, Immobile reportedly turned down an even bigger offer than that from an unnamed club in Saudi Arabia, stating his intention to retire at Lazio, now age 33. It's funny because... You always hear people say things like, no one's turning down that kind of money when a player agrees to go and play in Saudi Arabia, despite the fact that there are literally several examples of less wealthy current players who have done exactly that. Presumably because they are already very rich, they're content where they are, and they don't want to go and live and play in Saudi Arabia. Anyway, Immobile is already Lazio's all-time record goal scorer, and if he realises that goal of retiring at the club, he could set an unassailable record that's tough to beat. Sixth, Ricardo Orta. 
One of the most inexplicable stories in European football over the past decade is how Ricardo Orta is still at Braga. That is no disrespect to Braga, with their stunning stadium, who haven't finished lower than 6 since Orta first joined the club in 2016, but they have also never been crowned as Portuguese champions in their more than 100 year existence, and every team in Portugal is severely subservient to the big three. Braga broke into the top three in the Primera Liga in the 2019-20 season and won the Taça da Liga thanks largely to Ricardo Orta enjoying a remarkable season. Orta scored 24 goals and made 7 assists, playing predominantly on the left flank that season, which included a 95th minute winner against Porto in the Taça da Liga final. In truth, Orta has been outstanding in all seven of his seasons at Braga, where he has scored 108 goals and made 55 assists across 318 appearances. After being named in the Primera Liga Team of the Year, Orta also made Portugal's squad for the 2022 World Cup, despite intense competition in wide areas. It's little wonder, therefore, that Portugal's big three, and most notably Benfica, have all tried to sign him as well as a handful of clubs from outside of Portugal. Orta's situation is complicated by the fact that Braga don't actually own the entirety of his playing rights. According to reports, Orta's former club Malaga retained two-thirds of his ownership rights, meanwhile Braga only control a third, meaning that, for example, if they had accepted Benfica's 10 million euro bid, they would only actually see 3.3 million euros of that transfer fee. Braga were, however, forced to accept a bid of 15 million euros from MLS side Atlanta United, which met Orta's foreign club release clause. The offer from Atlanta United in August 2021 would likely have doubled Orta's salary if not more, yet he turned it down. Now aged 28, despite being a very big fish in a not particularly large pond, Orta doesn't appear to be pushing for a move at Braga, illustrating a kind of loyalty or at least lack of willingness to relocate his family that's fairly unusual within the modern game. Fifth, Mikel Oyarzabal. A native of Ibar in the Basque Country, Mikel Oyarzabal began his youth team career at Ibar and went on loan to his boyhood club's academy in 2013, but at the senior and professional level, he is a one-club man who has been relentlessly loyal to Real Sociedad. A wonderful footballer with superb technique, vision and work rate, Oyarzabal is rapidly closing in on 300 appearances at Real Sociedad, having made his debut at the age of only 18. Still aged only 26 now, but capped 23 times by Spain, Oyarzabal has had several opportunities to leave La Real, but he has turned every single one of them down. In 2016, for example, when La Real's bitter Basque rivals Athletic Club outlined their intention to trigger Oyarzabal's 40 million euro release clause, he signed a new deal for less money than he could have earned in Bilbao, increasing his release clause in the process to 60 million euros. Two years later, with Oyarzabal just having had a sensational season, he found himself in the same boat once again. Athletic Club were preparing to trigger his release clause, but he signed a new deal at L'Areal instead. He signed those two extensions, following seasons in which L'Areal had finished 9th and 12th in La Liga, despite him being one of the hottest prospects in the division. Last summer, it was widely reported that Man City, PSG, and Borussia Dortmund were locked in a three-way battle to sign Oyarzabal, but at no stage was his head turned, and nor was it when Barcelona came calling in the summer of 2020. Ultimately, Oyarzabal just seems very content at Real Sociedad, where he has been since the age of 14, and now that La Real are fourth and have booked their place in next season's UEFA Champions League, it seems unlikely that he will break that loyalty anytime soon. Fourth, Jonas Hector. The top four players in this seven are as loyal to their clubs as dogs are to their owners, starting with Jonas Hector. Germany's starting left back for four years, from 2015 to 2018, Hector starred as a left wing back under Joachim Löw as Germany won the Confederations Cup in 2017. Renowned for his versatility, work rate, no-nonsense defending, and above all else, his love of FC Cologne, Hector was considered one of the best left-backs in the world 
for a number of years. Towards the end of the 2017-18 season, with Cologne facing the likely prospects of relegation and interest in Hector from Germany's two biggest clubs, Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund, he chose to sign a new two-year contract extension with Cologne instead. Sure enough, Cologne were relegated, and Hector stuck around, rejecting Champions League football and millions more in the bank in favour of trying to help Cologne get out of the second Bundesliga. That is exactly what he did in fairness, as Cologne returned to the Bundesliga at the first attempt, but even then, that wasn't job done for Hector, who also declined a move to Barcelona back in 2016. Six months ago, Hector also turned down a call-up from Hansi Flick to represent Germany at the 2022 World Cup, having retired from international football in 2020. Now age 32, it seems certain that Hector will retire at Cologne, where he will be immortalised as a club legend. Third, Iago Aspas. Not dissimilar to Chiro Mobile in some respects, Iago Aspas struggled in his two brief stints outside of his home country, Spain in his case, and has just decided to stay put at a club where it works ever since, despite having been offered lots more money from lots of much bigger clubs. Aspas was born in Galicia, and he joined Celta Vigo's youth ranks at the age of only seven. That was 28 years ago. Since then, Aspas has scored 196 goals and made 68 assists in 453 games for Celta, having been the club's star man in every single one of his last 10 seasons there. That makes him Celta's all-time record goal scorer, by some distance, in addition to putting him second in the club's all-time appearance charts. An impressive debut campaign in La Liga prompted a move to Liverpool back in 2013 after Aspas turned down interest from Spanish and Italian clubs to join the Reds, but he hardly got a chance at Anfield and failed to impress when he did. He was slightly more successful on loan at Sevilla, though primarily in the cup competitions, before returning to Celta for a fee of just 5 million euros. That is one of football's all-time great signings, and since then, only Karim Benzema, Luis Suarez, and Lionel Messi have scored more La Liga goals than Aspas. That stat is all the more remarkable when one thinks of how many chances Barcelona and Real Madrid forwards get compared to Aspas at Celta, who have been embroiled in relegation scraps and on the back foot in games for most of that time. Unsurprisingly then, Aspas, who has been capped 20 times by Spain, has been showered with offers, which have come from Real Madrid in 2018, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid in 2019, and a contract at the height of the Chinese Super League mania from an unnamed Chinese club, reported to be worth 7 million euros a season. That is almost three times what he reportedly earns, even as the highest paid player at Celta. Aspas has turned them all down, and has never looked to force a move away from Celta at any stage during that time. Now age 35, it seems almost guaranteed now that he will retire with the club that he joined at the age of seven, and he will go down as their greatest player of all time. Second, Marco Reus. It isn't a very well-kept secret that Marco Reus has basically turned down all of the world's biggest clubs in order to stay at Borussia Dortmund. Whilst the likes of Ousmane Dembele, Jadon Sancho, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Erling Haaland, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Mario Goetze, Robert Lewandowski, and pretty soon Jude Bellingham have all come and gone, Royce has held firm, turning down moves that would double his wages, and more than double the likelihood of him winning major trophies. Real Madrid, Chelsea, and Bayern are probably the three teams that tried hardest to sign Royce at various stages, though Barcelona and Man City also expressed an interest, but Royce's head has never been turned. That is even more unusual than someone like Hector at Cologne or Aspas at Celta, given that Royce didn't even begin his career at Dortmund. Though he was born in the city, Royce was released by the club in 2006 and signed for Rottweiser Arlen in the Regionalliga Nord instead. Next came a move to Borussia Mönchengladbach before Dortmund realised the error of their ways and re-signed Royce for 17.1 million euros in January 2012 on a five-year deal. Though that was an outstanding piece of business, 
Royce had a 25 million euro release clause, which practically every super club in Europe wanted to trigger, after Royce won the Bundesliga Player of the Year award for the second time in only his second season at the Westfalen Stadion. Despite that easy route out, Royce chose to sign a new deal at Dortmund instead, removing that clause, and he has been with the club ever since. Age 33, Royce had plenty of injury problems in the mid to late 2010s, and the fact that he has won just 48 caps for Germany is not reflective of either his talent nor the remarkable club career that he has enjoyed. Nonetheless, he ranks 7th in Dortmund's all-time appearance charts and rising, and Alfred Preisler, who starred for Dortmund all the way back in the 1940s and 50s, is the only man to have scored more goals for the club. First, Jose Gaia. The man who inspired this seven, and was always earmarked for top spot if truth be told, it is hard to imagine a more loyal footballer in the modern era than Valencia's Jose Luis Gaia. Arguably, I think, the best left back in the world, and certainly not far off it if he isn't, Gaia is good enough to play for any club, and most of the top ones, invariably, have at some stage tried to sign him. When Gaia joined Valencia in 2006 as an 11-year-old, his boyhood club had just finished third in La Liga, one point behind Real Madrid, having won the La Liga title twice in the past five years. Since Gaia broke into the Valencia first team in 2012 though, aged only 17, the club has been in a period of long-term decline. Following the arrival of the deeply unpopular Peter Lim in 2014, Valencia have basically sold anyone who is worth anything the second that they have received a decent bid. Whether that be Nicolas Otamendi, Shikodra Mustafi, Joao Cancelo, Andre Gomez, Ferran Torres, Gonzalo Guaidez, Rodrigo, Roberto Soldado, and the list goes on and on. Gaia has had the chance to follow in their footsteps, and 3 or 4x his income while signing for a super club on multiple occasions. And even Valencia fans, witnessing the direction of travel that their club is heading in, and recognising the contribution that Gaia has made, wouldn't blame him if he did. At every turn though, Gaia has remained steadfast in his loyalty to the football club that he now captains. In 2015, Gaia did something that very few footballers ever do and turned down Real Madrid, where he would have succeeded Marcelo. In 2022, Barcelona spent months laying the groundwork for a bid to sign Gaia, confident that they could get a good deal on the Spanish international as he entered the final year of his contract. Despite the fact that Valencia were in the bottom half of the La Liga table and showed no signs of improvement, Gaia scuppered that move by agreeing to a new deal at the Mestalla. Having spent much of this season in the relegation zone, a few late season victories look set to keep Valencia in La Liga, but only just. And once again, there are few signs that next season carries with it any more promise. Nonetheless, Gaia, who is about to turn 28 and is right at the peak of his powers now, has shown no signs of wanting out. It is frustrating in some respects given that he is good enough to be fighting for titles and competing in the latter stages of the Champions League, but in a sport routinely described as being devoid of loyalty, he is perhaps the most notable exception. Before I leave you, I want to give quick honourable mentions to the likes of Jan Oblak, Harry Kane, Pau Torres, James Ward-Prowse, Inaki Williams, Unai Simon, and Ike Munyain. I shouldn't think that there was, but just in case there was any confusion, the likes of Thomas Muller and Sergio Busquets, who have been loyal in the sense that they have only ever played for Bayern Munich and Barcelona, missed out on this seven because they were already at Bayern Munich and Barcelona. Basically, if you already play for one of the biggest clubs in the world, competing for the biggest prizes and earning as much as you would just about anywhere else, you might be loyal to your club, and I am sure that Muller and Busquets are, but you'd also have plenty of justification for sticking around solely for selfish financial career-driven reasons. That goes for former players like Paolo Maldini and Ryan Giggs as well, for example, but the same is not true of Jose Gaia or Jonas Hector, Two left-backs, I've just noticed, so perhaps left-back is the most loyal position in football. 
Indeed, the most loyal footballer of this generation, I would argue, Marcel Janssen, who was so loyal to Hamburg that when they didn't offer him a new contract, he chose to retire from football at the age of only 29 because he couldn't bring himself to play for anyone else, was also a left-back. Ashley Cole, conversely, may well be the exception that proves the rule. The likes of Kane and Ward-Prowse who earned honourable mentions just missed out because I felt that the seven that I included had more opportunities and greater incentives not to be loyal. Ward-Prowse, whilst uber-professional and never having pushed for a move away from Southampton as far as I can recall, I can't recall the Saints accepting many, if any, bids for him, giving him the opportunity to reject a move in the first place, and Kane has had similar issues after his brother tied him down on a ridiculous contract at Spurs. And of course, he did also seem quite keen on joining Manchester City when Daniel Levy rejected a £100 million bid from the Emirati-owned outfit in 2021. Anyway, that is it for today's video, but thank you all very much as ever for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if that was the case. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and any players that you think I might have missed or that you don't think should have featured. And uh, obviously, it goes without saying, make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on, both for this channel and my second channel, both of which should be on your screens now and therefore very easy to subscribe to. You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at hitc 7 on both, and there should also be two videos on your screen now if you're not yet sick of my voice. I know, it's a long shot, but if that's the case, go ahead.